Torsten and Schaff's tutorial question number two. Again, extract the information. This time, we're told the power, so we can write that in appropriate units. We're told, actually, if it's ro rotating at six revolutions per second, what they're actually telling us there is a frequency, which is six revolutions per second, or six hertz. So often we're faced with the problem finding out what the frequency is. We're given the number of revolutions per minute, for example. I have to divide that by 60 to get the frequency in hertz. Tau, the shear stress, the maximum shear stress is 25 meganewtons, so again, appropriate units. And we've got to find D. So again, the start point is to have a look at the torsion equation. And R is what we're after effectively, because if we can find R, then the diameter is twice that. So we're after R in this torsion equation. We know tau, so that's OK. Um, we can find T using another equation, which we'll come to in a second, and J is involved. So actually, we know nothing about the shear modulus or the angle of twist or the length, so this is not a useful formula. So this is the, these two ratios we're going to use. And the first thing I would do here is say, well, I want R, so that's underneath. So I'm going to swap this ratio around, which means I swap this ratio around as well. I can write that R over tau equals J over T. I've inverted both ratios. So then I can say R, which is what I'm after, equals J over T times tau. So in fact, if that's the radius little r, then the diameter is going to be 2 times the radius, so it'll be 2 times j over t times tau. The problem is we don't know t, but I do know, again it's on the formula sheet in the exam, or we, it's in the, the list of formulae, that the power equals t times omega, where omega is the angular velocity. But I also know that omega equals 2 pi f. And I know the frequency, so I can work back from that to find t. So I know t. I don't know j, but I do know that j equals pi d to the 4 over 32. And d is what I'm after. So I can substitute in. Instead of j, I can write pi d to the 4 over 32. And instead of t, I can write, well, I can work out what t is. So let's see where that gets us. I can write that d equals 2 times j, which is pi d to the 4 over 32. over t, so the t goes underneath with the 32, times tau. So we've got that, where pi d to the 4 over 32 is j. We can see here that actually d's cancel, so I can actually say that 1 dividing both sides by d equals 2 pi d cubed over 32 t times tau. Now getting d cubed on its own, I can say that 32t over 2 pi times tau equals d cubed. So I've just rearranged. I've taken everything over to the left-hand side apart from d cubed. 32 over 2 is just 16. So 16t over pi times tau equals d cubed. And now we can find d because d equals effectively the cube root of 16t over pi times tau. And then I can put the numbers in and work out what d is. Quite an algebraic question, this one. You could do it step by step by working at what t is but you still be faced with calculating D.
using some sort of idea like this. Not something I'm going to particularly try to test in the exam because I'm not interested in the algebraic steps in this exam. So you're unlikely to get a question like this in the exam. Again, put the numbers in and see if you get the answer, which is around about 110 millimetres to two significant figures. So quite a tough question, that one.